Welcome TJK shares, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, this is the day God has given us. We give praise to him. Right now, we are recording this in Dominican Republic, September 26, 2022, at OC, what we call Opportunity Collaboration, Dominican Republic. This is another series of one-on-one -on -one with TJK. I have my brother, Dr. Kosi, here today, who is originally from Ghana, but as you know, I don't like to go into introductions. I like people to tell you, our followers, our subscribers, who they are. So welcome, help me to welcome my brother, doctor, a man of God, and a man who has made such a huge impact, not only in Ghana, but on the entire continent and globally. And globally, because we are even filming this at the ocean, in Dominican Republic. My brother, thank you for accepting my invitation and welcome. This is the first time we are recording using a phone, so bear with us as we improve technology. But Dr. Kosi, who are you and what do you do? Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jackson. It's such an honor to, to join uh, you um, together with your viewers. And uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, so I'm Kofi Osei Kosi and I serve senior leaders. So my purpose and work in life is serving senior leaders, helping senior leaders to develop holistically um, by having um, an entrepreneurial mindset, by being conscientious, and by being leaders that are incredibly skillful to be able to execute uh, the work that they do within the different leadership spaces that they work. Wonderful. But in addition to that, we also find out the husband in him and the father in him. Both of us are in Dominican Republic. Our children are back in our respective homes. So our babies, I know mine do watch this series, Talia, Tessa, Nolan, Nicholas, we send greetings to you. We wish you were here. And I'm sure you send the same greetings. Absolutely. I send greetings to my daughter, mommy, my son, Kofi, Kofi Jr. Yes, and sir. I have a nana and then I have a little Jackie. All right, Jackie, daddy sends greetings from Dominican Republic. So the first question we've been asking all our guests, we've had two guests so far, mm -hmm. we've recorded more, who will be coming, you will be our third in this TJK, one-on-one -on -one with TJK. Mm -hmm. We have so many listeners from around the world who are young, mm -hmm. who are still aspiring to do things we have done, which is why we started this channel. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what advice would you give yourself when you were younger? Think of 1821. Many of our listeners are there and they, are, they don't know what to do. They think CEOs like me, like you, were dropped out of heaven into the world to start doing the work we do. But we want them to hear from you. What advice would you give your younger self? I think um, I was quite fortunate uh, because around 18 years I had just finished high school. And I think the best thing I did, and I didn't realize it was that good until later on in life. Mm -hmm. It was that straight of a high school, a friend of mine, I was about 18 years, a friend of mine or my classmate came up with an idea. And he said, um, now that we are finishing school, why don't we find a way of keeping ourselves busy in a productive way? Now, what was his idea was that we should go around schools, write letters to the schools and invite young people between the ages of of say 11 and about 15 years, bring them into a conference center, invite speakers to come and speak to them about life, vision, and all of that. So it was my friend's idea, and, and he asked me if I could help him, and he was such a lovely guy. So I thought, wow, look, let me just be with him. So we didn't have any money, and the way we started was, you know, we had just finished high school, and we had big, big textbooks in Ghana, science books, maths books, and all of that. We sold some of our textbooks, um, one of our friends sold his shoes so we could pay for the conference room yes. um, to be able to rent that and bring people together and with that we started bringing people together and um, bringing different speakers to speak about vision and all of that and I think that was the, the biggest thing I did as a younger person because it taught me service and then it led me to discover my purpose in life which is to invest in people serve young people mentor people and that was the beginning from that 18 years so if i would go back i don't think i'll do anything different from that but i'll probably do more it's about finding opportunity to serve yes 
it's not about like John F. Kennedy said, it's not about what your nation can do for you, what your parents can do for you, what yes. people can oh, do for yes. you, but ask what you can do for other people. And because in the process of serving, in that mindset of how can I make the world a better place? How can I make my community a better place? I may not be rich right now, but I do have something little to share with others. At 18 years, I didn't have a lot of experience, mm. but at least we could convene younger people and get a more experienced person to come and talk to them. And guess where that has taken me today? And so, yes, find opportunities to serve and ask yourself, what can you do to make the lives of other people better? Because in serving others, you can never remain small. And well said, doctor, because Though we say we are recording uh, here in the uh, Dominican Republic and we have many young people listening, we do have also other CEOs, we have other followers, we have younger staff members and people from all over the world, international schools who follow this. Service above self. What we hear and what we've heard right now is his drive was service, serving others, do not ask what somebody can do for you, ask what you can do for somebody. If it is your country, many people are complaining, the government is not doing this for yeah. me, the government is not, uh, my uncle is not sending me this, I didn't get my birthday. Ask what you can do for somebody else and we will make the world a better place. And yes, there is a, a world and then we can make it better, but you cannot wait on others to do it, according to doctor, and I'm re-emphasizing the point, because I believe the same way. The reason I do what I do is to serve others, to create more leaders, to give people opportunity to listen to other leaders, which is why we have you today. Now we know what you would give us advice, but we also wonder, you touched on it, but now you can expand on it, mm. what led you into that passion? How can people find their passion and stick with it? If you can talk about finding your passion and follow it. Here we are in our late years, we are still working hard following our passion and people start this and start this business and then they sell Coca-Cola and then they sell uh, shirts and they cannot find their passion and land on it. How did you land on yours and then stick with it to this day? Thank you very much. Um, I was quite fortunate and just, I was also, if you like, quite lucky because I found my purpose by accident. I, find my, I, I found my purpose by following a friend. And fortunately, it was a good friend yes. who led me to do good things. And in following him, I mean, eventually what happened was we ran those conferences for about a year. And then after a year, he got a scholarship to come study in the United States. Mm. And so when he was about to go, he came to me and said, Kofi, Look, I, I have to go to school. Can you look after this group for me? Again, even at that time, I'm not sure I was so passionate about it. But look, my friend was a generous guy. I remember when we were in school, um, his, he had, they had a beautiful home that wasn't too far from, from our high school. And we were in boarding school. And on weekends, sometimes he would take us to his house and the mom would cook such, such a beautiful meal and we will eat it and all of that. And so I felt like I owed him. Yes. So when he was going to go to the States, I, I said yes, not because I really wanted to do it, but because he was such a good guy. But look, that was the best decision I, I, I have taken because following that, I carried on with the work and found my purpose in life. Mm. Now, how do you find your purpose? I found mine by accident. But the way to finding your purpose is number one, by looking for opportunity to serve. Yes. It comes through volunteerism. There is so much talent and there is so much opportunity. There's so much giftings in us that you will never know until you try something. Yes. And you need to look for more opportunities to serve, to try different things, and to have that kind of mindset of service because we are born with different giftings to help make the world a better place. So if I may give you some keys to discovering your purpose in life, Remember, it's not just about discovering your giftings. Your giftings are there to serve your purpose in life. Yes. Okay, so you are given the gifts and the talents to be able to serve a certain purpose in life. And your purpose in life is the problem you are called to solve. Your purpose in life is, is, is the why, why you were born. There is an agenda for which you were born. And if you will, um, if you will agree with me, the truth of the matter is for some strange reason, um, before we became like fetuses in our mother's womb, the, the sperms that your dad had to give your mom contained almost one billion sperm cells. Yep. So it took 
it was like a tablespoon of sperm that your mom, your dad had to give <laughs> your, your mom. Yes. And in that tablespoon contained close to one billion sperm cells. In other words, potentially one billion people could have come into the world. And wow. when, when that one billion sperm cells fertilized only one of your mother's eggs, they were all racing at speed. And so the first one to fertilize mom's egg is what became a baby. If it was twins, it was two. But generally, it's only one. Now, I've asked myself that question many times. Why would the creator allow one billion people wow. to run a race for only one to win before coming into the world? Yes. Now, the fact that I'm sitting here means that there were one billion people that wanted to come into the world. I was the one that fertilized my mom's so egg. Same for you. Yes. I asked myself many times, you know, I got the answer one day. And I found the answer was that God was telling you, yes. that if you were born, then you are already a winner. Before you were born, yes. you had to compete with <laughs> one billion people to come alive. So don't let nothing stop you. Stop giving excuses ah, of poverty and all of that. Wow. Because you already beat one billion people. You ran a race to beat one billion. So you were a winner, a winner to be alive. You. And you were a winner for a reason. Yes. Is it just to waste space and complain? No. You got to rise up out of your challenges. Rise up out of you. In fact, you had challenges before you were born. Yes. You're not going through challenges for the first time. Even before you, you were fertilized, you, you went to challenges of competing Ooh. and running with close <laughs> to 1 billion people to come into the world. So please, you're already, yes. you're already equipped to win. Yes. All right. And so the question is, what am I here for? You must look for that. You look for that through your talents. You look for it through the things that brings you peace. You look for that through service. You look for that by asking yourself, what troubles or problems in life makes me angry? The kind of problems that makes you angry gives you a clue to the reason why you were born. You know, there are people that see filth and all of that and it's so mad. There are other people that can live in filth and it's okay for them. But another problem kind of tickles them so much. And each one of us has different problems that tickle us and that keeps us awake. Now, those are clues to your purpose in life. There are many different ways of going ahead to really discovering our purpose. But you must make it an agenda that I must know why I was born. I may conclude this part of the conversation with a saying by the late Dr. Miles Moreau. You may have said it before. He said, the graveyard is the richest place on earth. Why? Because it's the place where many people died and never discovered their purpose. They took great mm. ideas, great giftings, great potentials. They buried died them. buried in the graveyard and never materialized it. But, but that cannot be your story. And that should never be my story. We must find our purpose. We must execute our purpose before we die. And then we would have made the one who brought us into this world really proud. Wow. Wow. That was a lot of knowledge, people. We will be bringing you scientists and reproductive uh, health experts. But I didn't see this one coming. One billion spams running at a speed. And you, the listener, today, you are the winner. Your was fertilized and you are here, so you must find your purpose. As a matter of fact, you can add winner to your middle name because, yeah. it, because it's part of you. Yeah. If you didn't win, you won't be alive. Exactly. Just, just add winner to your middle name. Jackson Winner Kagul. I'm telling you, go be winner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. That is really, really, really deep. And when you think about it, to all of you who are listening, really, you are here for a purpose. And make sure when you wake up, those of us who are Christians, who pray and meditate, I wake up and pray to God, help me find my purpose every single day. Mm. Mm. Help me find it. And I have a story I've told many times also, talking to my grandmother who ne ne I nearly died and she said, mm. you're not going to die mm. because you have not fulfilled your purpose. Wow. So the fact that I'm still alive means that purpose is not fulfilled. It's not complete. So mm -hmm. now you heard about the passion from the doctor, from the brother, from uh, this man who is still struggling to get that purpose done and we are speaking alive because we are still striving to fulfill that purpose. Our last question before we get to know more about what he does, the books is written and all other good stuff and we must today remember to give our listeners your information, your website and where they can find more information. We didn't do that with our first two listeners, but we'll make sure we do that as we learn and unlearn together. Last question from me, then we, we get to hear more about what you do. You manage a Pan-African, basically a global 
a global project, a global service to humanity. What is your management style? Well, thank you for that question. And um, very interesting. And in all humility, I do hold like two degrees in, um, my first two degrees were in human resource management. However, I like to say that um, you don't manage people. So I don't have a people management style. Yeah. You, you don't manage people because the human being is not a resource. Mm. They, we have human resource management and I have a deg two degrees in that, but we don't manage human beings because a human being is not a resource. Mm -hmm. Resources are managed. So you, you manage resources like time. Yes. You manage resources like land. You manage resources like vehicles. You manage resources like tools mm. and like cash. Yes. But a human being is not a resource. The human being is the owner of resources. The human being is the only being that owns resources, right? The human being is the owner of resources. The human Tweet. being is not a resource. Yes. And so we don't manage people. We lead people. Yes. We lead people. Human beings are led. Yes. But resources are managed. Like money, time, space, and all that. You, ma management is control. Management mm. is organizing. Yes. Management is directing. We direct resources, control, and organize resources. But the human being is not controlled. The human being is led. So my leadership style, as opposed to, I, I manage things, but in terms of leading people, my leadership style is servant leadership. Servant leadership, servant is, leadership. is the style of leadership where you as the leader see yourself as the servant of the people and that you exist as a leader to serve and support the good of the people that you're leading. In other words, it's the people first. Yes. And it's the interest of the people first. Mm. It's the welfare of the people first. And it is it is helping them become all that they they want to be or take them to that goal where it, it's in the interest of them. And so in servant leadership, it's not a leader first. It is you seeing yourself as a servant first and, and being willing to get yourself dirty to serve the course of the people that you are leading. Wonderful. Managing resources and then lead the people. That is the wisdom we are getting. We are so appreciative of your time you spend. But we will be amiss if I don't let you, number one, do a shameless plug. That means you can promote anything you want to promote or talk about something you want to talk about right here. But our listeners would like to know more on our day-to-day -day work currently. What? I met you at United Nations many years ago. That's right. We were both speaking at United Nations. We've been to so many conferences. I have done some work for you voluntarily. You do something so special and you have extended some of those uh, opportunities to our Nyaka staff members who are, will be listening to you. So talk about what you do day to day, other projects you are involved in, other organizations you are involved in, and shameless plug on where people can get whatever you're going to plug. Well, first of all, I want to say a big thank you to my brother, Dr. Jackson um, Kaguri, and uh, a man that I greatly, deeply, deeply respect and honor um, for his life and service to the continent of Africa. Uh, to some extent, I'm not from Ghana, I'm, I'm from Africa. I, I, I belong to every single part of this continent, and I celebrate him for the pillar that he is uh, to the entire continent of Africa. I get the opportunity to serve at the Pan-African Leadership Institute where we get to help leaders develop themselves, discover themselves, yes. and maximize their potential. To some extent, we work with senior leaders. Everybody's a leader, um, but some leaders are leaders of leaders. And my work is more with leaders of leaders, uh, people that lead a greater number of people within the different professional fields. And so we run a lot of different courses at the Pan-African Leadership Institute. Some of our courses are in-person, but a lot of them are also virtual. So we have leaders from around the world that come onto our courses. We have current leaders from over 29 countries that jump onto our courses yes. um, to get different kinds of wisdom. And one unique thing about the Pan-African Leadership Institute is the fact that we recognize wisdom that is collected in Africa. A lot of the time we think all oh, the smart ideas come from the West, America, oh, no, no, and no. Europe, but there is so much wisdom. I want you to believe in yourself if, if you come from Africa, this is the time to believe in yourself. There's a lot of wisdom, and we tap into that kind of wisdom in, 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 in collaboration with all the other wisdom, contemporary wisdom from around the world to develop the best of leaders for the future of Africa. And so you can look us up 
at the Pan-African Leadership Institute. You can just Google it and you'll be able to read a lot more about that. You can also Google the Osei Kusi Foundation, Osei Kusi Foundation, O-S-E-I, K-U-S-I Foundation um, dot, dot org and you'll be able to see quite a bit of the work that we do uh, with young people uh, who live with disabilities. We sponsor them through school. So that's one of the exciting things that I have had the opportunity to do with this My Little Life. And I do have a couple of books as well. Some of them are on Amazon. Yes, um, I have a book entitled The Ultimate Guide to Happiness uh, for Young People. I have another book entitled The Power of Self-Confidence. You must have it. Yes. I have another book entitled You Are Too Much. You have to read that book. <laughs> I keep getting emails from all over the world, yes. people reading the book. The other day, I got an email from a, a young man sitting somewhere in Togo, opened the book, reading, you are too much. I get so much feedback from it because people have been pushed down by parents, pushed yes, down yes, by the environment. Yes, yes. But in that book, I have amazing chapters. One of them is called, you are too intelligent. Look, it doesn't matter what your teachers are telling you. You are smarter than your teachers are telling yes, you. Yes. There's a guy, you know, called Einstein. Yes, and Einstein became one of the most brilliant pe persons that ever lived. And yet a whole Einstein, when he was in school, yes. his teacher said he was damp. Yes. And so forget damp. about what your yes. teachers are saying. I'm here to tell you, and God also tells you that you were too intelligent. You're too intelligent. You're too gifted. Yes. You're too powerful. Oh, yeah. You're too rich. Rich. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you need to get that book. You are too much. And of yes. course, I had another book called Money is Not a Problem. Money is not a problem. Ma money is not a problem. Yes. You know, you need to get a book, man. <laughs> you know, I, I, I say to myself that that's one book. And funnily, you won't believe me, I'm wrapping up. But funny, you won't believe me. But I read my own books. I read my own books because to some extent, I write them under some level of inspiration. So I, I read them from, from time to time. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I, go, I, I, I go through them to really inspire myself. But there's this book, You're Too Much, that I say to myself, even if I don't open the book, the title alone is inspiring enough. You know, we all have big projects we are working on. You've done amazing things. And many times you are thinking, how do I get money to do this? But I just remember that money is not a problem. Yeah. Wow. And just by that mindset, money resources just problem. keep coming. Do you have to be telling excuses. yourself, yes. money is not a problem. Yes, money is not a problem. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's a good ending right there. We make excuses every single day. You are too much, but money is not a problem. We try to make it a problem, but we are finding out from the expert. He's written about it. He's our brother. He's a doctor. He's a Pan-Africanist. And most importantly, he's a human being looking out for others. And that's why he accepted an invitation to come here, to inspire you, to motivate you. Look him up, Pan-African Institute, Osei Kosi Foundation. Both we put them in our title under remember subscribe like and share don't you get this information and keep it to yourself the bible i'm a christian man i keep telling you whether you have higher power called buddha you don't worship anything my bible says you cannot get a light and cover it it will not light the room we are lighting one by one this channel will light one by one, we want to create sunshine and light into the lives of others and continue to serve. Until next time, we thank you, we appreciate you. Remember, the best is yet to come. Thank you, my brother. You're welcome. You're welcome, sir. Thank you.